How's it going guys? Brian here at Triple B and I'm hanging out with my friend Carla from the channel One Soft Kiss. She's been doing snake YouTube videos, well, much, long, much longer than I have, that's for sure. Yeah, she's <laughs> promoting how awesome snakes are to the world. And uh, she was kind enough to invite me into her home and we're gonna hang out and talk snakes and hang out with snakes. And you know how we do it around here. We're all watching Triple B TV. That's how we do it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I scared with this. I feel like it's, it has to be asked like how how you got into keeping snakes. How did you get into keeping snakes? It was easy. My mother was terrified of them, and every time she'd see one in the yard, she'd scream, and my father would grab a hoe and kill it. So anytime I heard her scream, I'd go and grab the snake, throw it in a box, get on my bike, and take it way out in the woods and release it. It's like 14 years old, except the water moccasin I kept. <laughs> <laughs> and this was in uh, North Carolina? Yeah. All right. We had a whole nest of coral snakes in our rock wall, but it was like a split-level property. They had an exterminator come out. We had another nest of them, and our, we had like a brick wall that had little miniature hedges in it around our windows in the den. They had to come and tear the whole wall out and exterminate it because there were so many coral snakes in the wall there. So our yard was a paradise for them. We had a concrete goldfish pond on the other side of the property, and it was surrounded by lily pads. And that's how I found my water moccasin. Always in the, I go mow the yard, and they get run from the track, the lawnmower and everything. So I'd like grab them, but this one was injured, so I felt bad for him, and I sneaked him, put him in my shirt, and took him in the house in my pocket, and hid him in my dresser drawer. And we had a maid that did our laundry and did our cooking, because mother was a professional, and my father was. She went in one day. Mother just got out of work, and I was sitting in the kitchen having coffee with her. And Avis was her name, and Avis went over and put my laundry away, and she came running up through the utility room where the washer and dryer was, and she ran up the stairs, and she, Francis, Francis, your daughter's got a snake in her dresser drawer. And my mother looked at me, she goes, oh, what? I said, I don't know what she's talking about. She, Avis goes, I know what snakes look like, that's a snake. Mother said, are you serious? I said, it's a little one. She said, no. And so we talked it out for about a week. I made her think I took it out and let it go. And But we talked it out. She said, you can keep it. Because my room was like the utility room. Then you went down some more stairs, went up some more stairs. And there was like a hallway with a front and back door. You could go out to the parking lot or you could go out back to the big backyard where it was split level. And my room was like way on the other side of the house. I had privacy there. It's, it's interesting about how you put it in your pocket. My grandfather had a very similar story for me where he really? he was with a copperhead when he said he, he used to Mine catch them and stick them in the yeah. pocket, yeah. in his shirt pocket, and take mm -hmm. them on. I just thought that was the cra one of the craziest things no, I've ever heard. No, now you heard of it again. <laughs> he would, he, I had him for a year, and he would get in my pocket. I could walk around the house all day with him in my pocket, and once in a while his head would pop up, and Avis would go, I'd see it coming, and I'm like, Psh. I said, I'll take him back over to my so room. So you've been, you've been keeping snakes close to, it's going to be coming up 57. on six decades you've been yeah. keeping snakes. Yeah. That's, uh, I'm sure you've seen and observed many, many things in that time. Yeah. With their behavior and their, yeah. yeah. I mean, you, you have a deeper connection with snakes more than, than just about anybody I've seen, I think. In my experience, the, the connection. Brian that, Gundy says that too. Brian Gundy says yeah. the same thing. He said you go above and beyond perception of what these animals are capable like of. Like when I was sitting here earlier today with one of your snakes on me, and just like just being here and being in your presence and your snake's presence, mm. I had kind of a spiritual moment myself. I've had spiritual moments with snakes, you know, growing up myself too. But sitting here, in particular, I had a, a really deep one where I just. I mean, you saw how long I was sitting here with, with Two chewing hours. With, with, on my with chest. With fade. Yeah. yeah, with fade on my chest. And yeah. uh, I, I just got into such a deep Zen relaxation. I almost felt like Snake Buddha for a second sitting here. They do that. Yeah. yeah. They're capable. They're very good healing animals. 
emotionally, physically, they're very good for healing. They have powers to heal. I liked what you had said about um, how they're how they're grounding, how they're they're a ground. They're always on the ground, you know. Yeah. Even if they're in the tree, they're they still crawling on the ground. They keep you close to nature because they're the lowest animal on the planet. That's always on the ground. Crawling nature. on their belly. Yeah. yeah. And they lay on you and kind of bring you back down. That's how I felt. I felt like I had been. That's what they do. Yeah. yeah. Yep. That's cool. Triple B T V has had a, a lack of physical snakes on from time to time. I think we should pull out Chewy and, and sure. hang out with them on. So the crazy thing about this this guy for a male carpet python, mm -hmm. he is huge. He's and, bigger than most females. Yeah. yeah. And you would you would think like when you see him on pictures and stuff, you'd almost think that he's like fat, overweight. But if you hold him and you feel him, he's like solid muscle. You can bring that up in the video. I think it'd be a cool thing to do because people judge by that, by vision instead of by, they don't ask. How do you think he got to be this big? Physical activity. Physical activity. Because yeah. this is like solid, this is solid muscle here. Physical activity. It's a strong, <laughs> strong snake. Yeah. And he's a mama's boy. So what's this, what's the story with Chewy? Can you give us Chewy's story? Well, I did, uh, I've been good friends with Brian for almost 13 years, Brian Barchak, and I did uh, some work on his MySpace page, and I did uh, Chewy's MySpace page. And so he told me I could pick any snake I wanted as a gift for doing all the editing and everything. And I told him I wanted a coastal carpet python. And he said, I've got a lot more, more valuable than that. And I said, I want a well, coastal carpet python. So. Oh my God. Yes, I love you. So um, I picked him out. That's how I got him. And then Jade, I told him I wanted a female. I had to wait two years for him to produce a female for me. That's where she came from too. And so he's, he's named after Chewy. Chewy that worked in the nursery that used to work at BHB Reptiles. And Jade's n named after Brian and Lori's daughter. I have to name a snake after Noah now so they all feel <laughs> special. You're huffing. It is warm in here. I'm sweating. I love you. Yes, I do. I'm sweating a little bit too. Honestly. You're going to give me salmonella. <laughs> oh dear. Want to share your germs with me? Have you ever uh, heard of a case of a snake actually giving somebody nope. salmonella? Yeah, neither have I. Only if people give them live poultry. That's the only thing they can get it from. What's Chicken, up, chickens spread salmonella and get down. <laughs> Dairy products and poultry usually are the carriers, not snakes. I told you about that. If they gave you salmonella, I'd have been dead a long time ago because my snakes have been kissing me for a long time. He gets so happy when he comes out. He just doesn't know what to do with himself. <laughs> well, your snakes probably get more outside of the enclosure activity than many snakes out there, I think. Well, kept my general activity. rule is if I have to clean an enclosure, a snake comes out and it gets quality time with me before it goes back in. So they know we're not just an object that you take out, clean your mess up and put me back in. We're special to you. So you spend time with me in between cleaning my house and put me back in. And it's important for them to know that they're more to you than just something you take out and put back in a club, I mean, an enclosure. These snakes definitely have a, a special feel to them. Yeah. I mean, I've hung out with lots of snakes in, in time, you know, lots of different people's snakes and recently, in the last year. Mm -hmm. I can't think of how many different people's snakes I've hung out with. And these snakes just have this... I feel like all your snakes are like Halo for me, for my, my Halo, because the way I feel they about with They my... communicate with you. You don't hear it, but you can feel it. People think they're stupid and they're not. Kills me. If you had one thing, one piece of advice to give to anybody getting into keeping snakes for their first time, what would it be? I could say research, but care sheets are too generic. They're not a good route to go. Honestly, talk to people that have years of experience that interact with their snakes because if they don't interact with them, don't observe them and don't handle them and don't work with them, all they can give you is hearsay, what they assume is going on. But you take someone like you that works with your snakes, your children work with them. I handle mine all the time. Then you know. 
And this, you know, you can't teach someone something you don't know yourself. And that's what a lot, a lot of people come online. They're like, you got to do this. You got to do that. No, you don't. That's not the way it is. You got to spend more time with them and let them teach you about them so you can teach others. And then there's so many people that look at them different now. When I first started showing me taking mine outdoors, everybody's like, you don't do that. That's bad for them. And now I'd say half of YouTubers take their snakes outdoors. There's no reason why they should be able to live like a snake. That's why my snakes are social and friendly because they have a, they have the freedom to express themselves. They can't do that locked in a box all the time. True, very true. Carla, I appreciate you having me here at the place. I really appreciate you taking me into your home like this, so. Why, well, thank you. You're a welcome guest and I've enjoyed talking to you. That's great learning from others. That's what I wish people would do. Yeah, I've, def I've definitely learned a lot in, in the short time I've been here. We yeah. learned how to do a nose tap and say no. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, you got this. Okay. <laughs> you would not believe this if I told you. I was sitting here, I was holding her Doom Rosabella and he was laying on me and he would move, he started moving towards my armpit and she's sitting across the room and she says, no. And the snake stops moving. <laughs> Three times in a row Three you did times. that. Yeah. And then I taught you how and you did it. Yeah, that was... <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> they can hear well enough to hear your voice tone change. Like I said, I can get up in the morning and say, Chewy, his head will pop up and he'll stand periscope in his cage and look to see what I want. I've, I've never seen snakes re respond to voice command like, I've, like since I've seen here yeah, today. Yeah, they do. It's been crazy. They can hear a lot better than people give them credit for. Yeah, because they still have the two of the bones inside for the inner ear yeah. inside the head. It's... Did you know they're doing surgery now? They found that they can do eardrum replacement with using it, setting it up like the bones on a snake's jaw that makes them hear audible sounds without external ears. So people have been deaf all their lives can now hear. But it's it's set up the same way that the snake's jaws are. The jawbone yeah. sort of thing, yeah, yeah, crazy. Who knows you? <laughs> yeah, snake kisses give you salmonella. <laughs> they give you good vibes. It's what they give you. He really hooked on. All my snakes went right to you. They usually don't care for men too much, but like I said, you have the gift, and they knew it. They know. They do. You walk up to a snake, you don't even have to have the enclosure open. They know, know more about you with you standing there than, mo than you know about yourself sometimes. These guys know me better than my family does. I just wish people would spend more time with their snakes. You know, I hate seeing them locked up and caged all the time because you're not giving them a chance to express themselves, and they need to. They're still living, functioning creatures. Everybody has their reasons for how they keep them, but this is the best life they could have. Ha-ha, I got it. <laughs> he stole them. <laughs> <laughs> he, 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 Thanks, uh, Oh, thank you. Good times. I just hope I didn't wreck your camera. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure that when I dropped it, I was doing more wrecking than you could have. <laughs> it was fun. I enjoyed it. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> um, you can watch the intro, so you know, I just, I'll do a little spiel. Do you want to say that you're watching Triple B TV and do the snap with me? That's what I usually do. On, I don't know if I can snap with, yeah, I can snap. <laughs> can you snap? Can you, can you do, can you do the, two, the two finger snap? That'll work. I got That'll work. Okay. As long as it's, it's a timing thing. We, we say, I should have put my Triple B shirt on.